Hey there, everybody. Um, today is, I think, Tuesday. And I'm getting ready to prepare. Um, <clears throat> Last year I did um, 22 hikes, anywhere from 8 miles to 12 miles. I think there were a couple that were like maybe 15 um, in the Sierra Nevadas. And I've been the last couple of days, there's one particular hike um, that's calling to me. And um, it's up off the highway that goes to Kirkwood. And you basically park and trek in, and it goes through. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, but this year I'm going um, <clears throat> with more medicine and prayers. <clears throat> for the nature beings and for the earth mother and the water and all these different things. Um, so yeah, um, doing that. Um, so something I've, you know, been starting to do over the last couple years, which I didn't really do for a long time. Um, and Something I learned from one of my native teachers that it's passed on, and that sometimes um, we have to take a really clear stand in some cases. So, for example, I was up um, along the river outside of town in a place where kind of has like a short hiking loop along the river and I always kind of looked at it as an important place you know another thing too is like we should never build anything near water water nature needs that soil and those trees and the bushes and the animals who live there um, to help heal it it has a relationship with it there's a really great video called, um, oh man, <clears throat> something on YouTube about um, the wolves restoring Yellowstone National Park. And what happened was is that they stopped, you know, trapping and killing wolves. And the wolves, um, by natural process, um, would create dens, you know, basically along the riverbank. Um, and so they would actually keep a lot of the animals out, uh, and especially the herds and the buffalo, you know, they would come down and they would trample and destroy landscape, um, and sometimes eat the landscape away and it would cause massive erosion. But because the wolves came back in and they started, you know, picking off some of the herd, so the herds weren't, you know, were being thinned a little bit, and they also controlled the riverbank. Um, it kept it from getting eroded. It actually healed the river. So man has to get away from the water, and we have to stop building on the water. Um, so I noticed on this hike, because I haven't been up there in a few months because it's been cold, there's like all these mechanical um, big equipment, scrapers and backhoes and, and all this stuff. And the path that people will walk out there, and mind you, not everybody goes on this path. Only people who love nature. You can just feel it. You walk on that path and you know that the people who walk on that path just project how beautiful it is to that area there and so it's super helpful to have this path that people are blessing this area with their thoughts and their heart and their minds and their spirit but doing no harm and this developer is actually taking stakes and is staking along and around this path in a way that he's saying I own this and in order to put these houses on there the path is going to have to go away. So 
that when the houses are sold, they're not going to want people walking through their property. So it's like a violation. It's like a caveman, you know, coming over and peeing on his territory in an aggressive way. It totally pissed me off. I mean, just really like how destructive, how destroyed. Mind you, somebody had a golf course there a while back and the golf course went bankrupt. And so the, the nature there was just starting after 15 years to break down and kind of take back over the destruction that was already there and the chemicals, like the chemicals that they put on golf course are the worst possible chemicals you could ever imagine. And then they go into the water system. And so here we have another person coming in and, you know, the golf course people or the bank are selling lots to people along the river there. So, you know, basically what I did was I just defunded that contractor's project on a spiritual level. And I also claimed that if they continue to build defunded or who else enters and gets involved or loans money to continue this, um, that they will all be defunded and they will all be bankrupt and they'll all have nothing. And then I returned that piece of land back to the river and back to the mother the earth and this is the thing that one of the main things that I've always learned from native people about us white people in in particular is that we're takers and we don't really care about the birds or the rocks or the soil or the plants um, or anything, the water. We only care about making a profit, having our own mansions, having all this stuff at the expense of our planet. And our planet is not making it. It is not good. And so I really feel like we're at a time period where instead of protesting and all these other things that we need to gain our power and we need to go into places and we need to make we need to revoke power we need to revoke energy where we see it where it's destructive and harming and then we need to reclaim it and give it back to which it where it belongs, who it belongs to. So anyway, that's my approach now. And I'm going to go back once the snow melts and see how, how well they're doing. I might have to do a few more loops in there. I might have some stuff I need to pick up that loopholes, spiritual and energetic loopholes that I need to pick up um, if they seem to be m moving ahead. Um, but I think it's the only way um, that we can teach people a better way is to, you know, financially destroy them. Because, you know, the earth doesn't really care about money. The, you know, galactic beings, they don't really care about money. The animals don't care about money. The water doesn't care about money. The earth doesn't care about money. Um, you know, all of the really important things, frequencies, energies, and vibrations, they don't care about money. Money is a white man made up bull caca crap. And um, if you can make a living, you know, in the right way, in a good way, um, that's one thing. But to rape the resources and damage and cut and maim um, 
so that one person can have a $10 million house is like cuckoo, super cuckoo, especially when it takes over a whole area that no one can enjoy anymore. You know, that it's, yeah, I'm getting really tired of going to some of my favorite places and they have, you know, Taj Mahal's built on them with giant security fences out in the middle of nowhere. And it's totally damaged. And it's not working well with my prayers and my routine and um, the areas that, you know, I've been asked to caretake. So I have to start defending these areas. And some people might think it's a pretty harsh spiritual way that I'm going to be doing this or that I am doing it. I really care. I'm just done with um, trying to be peaceful about it. And I actually think that this is actually more peaceful because I'm less angry about it once I, you know, spin a web um, and uh, do the right thing for the planet. I'm good. Just the person that bought that land and who thinks they're going to make a gazillion dollars and, you know, destroy the environment. It ain't going to be good for them. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. So get your power. Proclaim, intend, um, and disempower, um, defund energetically, you know, whatever you need to in order to make good in the right way, in a good way. Anyway, have a great day. Um, Bridget Lynn Dolgoff, Conscious of Economics and the Urban Farm Project. And uh, until I see you again, bye.